Hello, welcome to Cloud Learning Channel. In this module, we will learn about graph databases. And we'll talk, I will talk about uh, what is graph database and what are the use cases. And uh, I will also talk about graph databases on AWS and uh, what are the use cases and how do we deploy uh, Amazon Neptune um, uh, in Amazon. So I will perform that exercise using uh, AWS console. Okay, before I go to AWS console, so let me talk, uh, let me give you guys a few details about graph database. What is a graph database? So graph databases are purpose built to store and navigate uh, relationships. Our relationships are first class citizens in a graph databases. And most of the value of graph, graph databases is derived from these relationships. Our graph databases uh, use nodes to store data and en entities and uh, edges to store relationships between entities so we know entities like you know like a traditional databases attributes entities so in a graph database an edge always has a start node and node type and direction and an edge can describe parent child relationships actions ownership and the like so there is no limit to the number and the kind of relationships a node can have so a graph in a graph database can be traversed along specific edge types or across the entire graph. In a graph databases, traversing the joints or relationships is very fast because the relationships between nodes are not calculated at query time, but are persisted in the database. So the graph databases have advantages for use cases such as the social networking, and we know LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, they're all social networking apps. And that is a good, good um, example, like, you know, and uh, the, the other one is fraud detection. And when we need to create relationships between the data and quickly query these relationships. And let me give you guys the example for this graph database. So here is the example of a uh, social network graph. So here we see like, you know, uh, a lot of uh, people, like, you know, I think everyone has a Facebook account or LinkedIn account. So here Sam is a, like, you know, uh, a friend of Annie, but uh, Jack, like, you know, he has uh, friends, uh, like multiple friends here, like, you know, Mac and Harry, Howard, Doc, and then, but he's connected to Annie and Annie connected to Sam. So somehow Sam also connected to Jack. So this is a good example, like, you know, uh, all the social uh, networking apps is a good example for this graph database and what are the use cases so what is the use case for this graph databases uh, and uh, fraud detection let's talk about fraud detection so graph databases are capable of sophisticated fraud prevention so with these graph databases we can use relationships to process financial and purchase transactions in near real time and with fast uh, graph queries, uh, we are able to detect that, uh, like example, a potential purchaser is using the same email address and credit card as included in a known fraud case. So graph databases can also help us easily detect relationship patterns such as multiple people associated with a personal email address or multiple people sharing the same IP address but residing in different physical addresses. Uh, and the second use case is is a uh, second use case is recommendation engines. So graph databases are a good choice for recommendation application. Uh, with these graph databases, we can store in a graph relationship between information categories such as customer interest, friends, and purchase history. So we can use a highly available graph database to make product recommendations to a user based on which products are purchased by others who follow the same sport and have similar purchase history or we can identify people who have a friend in common but don't don't yet know each other and then make a friendship recommendation okay so now uh, how these graph databases work on uh, aws so how do we create a graph databases on aws and what is the service that we use for this graph databases on aws so that is amazon neptune so here, uh, let's talk about graph databases on AWS. So uh, Amazon, Amazon Neptune, 
uh, is a fast, reliable, fully managed graph database service like that. Uh, services that makes it easy to build, run applications that work with highly connected data sets. So the core of Neptune is a purpose-built high-performance graph database engine. So this engine is optimized for storing billions of relationships and querying the graph with the milliseconds latency. And Amazon Neptune uh, supports the, the popular graph query languages, uh, Apache Tinkerpop, Gremlin, the W3CCs, and uh, Sparkle, uh, all these. And uh, it, uh, it enables us to build queries that efficiently navigate highly connected data sets. So Amazon Neptune uh, powers graph use cases such as recommendation engines, uh, like we discussed uh, before this slide, uh, recommendation engines, fraud detection, knowledge graphs, drug discovery, and network security. And uh, as we all know that uh, all the services are highly available on AWS and also this Amazon Neptune uh, is highly available with the read replicas and point in recovery and continuous backup to Amazon S3 and also the replication across availability zones. And uh, Amazon Neptune provides a data security features with support for encryption, uh, both in REST and transit. So a uh, lot of services uh, in Amazon, we can uh, do encryption in uh, both, both, both options, uh, even in a transit or at REST. So, and uh, Neptune provides the same data security features, like, you know, for encryption at REST and transit. And Amazon Neptune is fully managed, so we no longer need to worry about the database management tasks like hardware provisioning, software patching, setup, configuration, or backups. Okay, so let's talk about how Amazon Neptune works. So here we see that uh, on the, the, the architectures, so the first one is Amazon S3, that is our storage uh, service in AWS. So where we can uh, store all data, all of our data in any format. And um, here we see that Amazon S3 fast parallel bulk loading for CSV and RDF data stored in S3. And once we have data in Amazon S3, then we can uh, send it to Amazon Neptune. So that is purpose-built graph databases that stores billions of relationships that we just talked about. Uh, what is this Amazon Neptune built uh, built in in uh, AWS? And once we have that Neptune, and then we can use the fast graph queries, open graph APIs for Apache, Tinkerpop, Gremlin, W3CCs, and HDF and open Cypher. And once we have this, like, you know, client access the content using the fast graph queries um, from Amazon Neptune. So easily, we can easily execute queries that efficiently navigate highly connected data sets. And uh, we just discussed about what is this Amazon Neptune. We also talked about what are uh, graph databases and how uh, it works on AWS. Now I'll, I'll show you guys how to deploy a Amazon Neptune. How do we configure Amazon Neptune using AWS console? I logged into AWS console, so here I see all the services, but I will go to search and look for uh, Neptune, Amazon Neptune. And here I see all the services that are available in Amazon. When I just look for Neptune in the search, so I get the service, uh, Amazon Neptune. So click on Amazon Neptune. So, and uh, this page will uh, navigate us, like, you know, how to configure our uh, Amazon Neptune. Let's just click on launch. So here we see that uh, create a database. And here we have uh, two engine types, Neptune provision and serverless. So I will just select the provision. And if you want serverless, you can select it. And uh, if we look at the, the versions, so we have all the versions available. And uh, this is uh, Neptune 1.2, 0.2R2. So I will pick that one, the default one. And this is a demo session, but again, if you want to deploy Amazon Neptune for your organization, but please follow your organization's uh, recommendations or standard. This is just a demo purpose, like, you know, how the Neptune works in uh, AWS and uh, how we deploy or how do we configure Neptune uh, in AWS. So this session just helps you to configure or to get some understanding on uh, AWS Neptune. 
Okay, so now the next one, DB cluster identifier, and here we need to enter a database name. I will say database graph, I will say uh, graph uh, DB01, my uh, DB cluster identifier. And here we see that templates available, and we need to choose the templates to meet our use case. And we have production and development and testing. So I'll select development and testing. And the next one is DB instance size. So we have memory optimized classes, bustable classes. So I will just select the, the bustable class uh, that includes T classes. I will just select this uh, uh, DB T3 medium. The next one is availability and durability. So if you want to create a re re replica in a different zone, you can do it like, you know, that, that is good. Like, you know, if you are implementing this at organizational level, so you you, you must need a, re re a replica that helps you like, you know, in case of uh, disaster, so you can still uh, read your data from the other zone. But since this is a demo session, I will just keep it now. And the next one is uh, connectivity. So if you have any virtual private cloud uh, exist in AWS, you can choose that one, or I will just use the default one, or you can create a new virtual private cloud if you want. And let's look at the additional connectivity configuration and subnet group, everything looks good. And then a VPC security group, or choose existing, or you can create a new one if you want, and availability zone, everything looks good. And let's look at the notebook configuration. And here we can we can create a Jupyter notebook to easily query our Neptune database. So Jupyter notebooks are hosted and built through SageMaker at our standard SageMaker usage rates. Okay, so we can create a notebook at any time from the Neptune console. Okay, so I'll just create like you know, um, a notebook. So here you see that notebook name AWS iPhone Neptune iPhone. I'll just say notebook um, a zero one. And if you want to enter some description for this uh, notebook, you can. Uh, I'll just leave it. And uh, you can uh, choose an existing role or create a new IAM role. Okay, so I'll just say a new IAM role. I'll just say this one is um, a Neptune, a notebook, zero one. And and the next one, internet access, direct access through Amazon SageMaker. And if you want to add a tag, you can add it. You can add up to 50 tags. And let's look at the additional configuration. So database options, and uh, we enter graph db01. That's our uh, database uh, cluster. And everything looks good here. And if you want to increase the backup period, right now it's just one day. But if you want, like, you know, increase it, and it is available up to 35 days. and. Uh, uh, you can uh, increase that backup uh, retention period. And then uh, let's look at everything, log exports, everything looks good and maintenance window, so no preference. And if you want to enable this deletion production, you can do it because so that no one can delete your uh, uh, DB cluster, but uh, you can always change this option. So here, if you see that right, it protects the database from being deleted accidentally. While this option is enabled, you can't delete the database, so that's why. But this is demo session, so I will just uh, keep it uh, uh, unchecked. And everything looks good here, so let, let's go back again. And here you see that Notebook 01 already exists, so let me just create Notebook 02. And let's look at uh, one more time, and we select the template development, and then uh, Neptune engine type is provision. Everything looks good here. Now let me create this database. And everything looks good here and uh, we don't see any errors. And here under the notifications, you see that creating a database, grab db01. So our database will be started automatically and might take a few minutes to launch. And also we created a notebook that is notebook02. So our notebook instance will be started automatically and might take a few minutes, same like a database. So this is how you can uh, create a uh, Neptune uh, database on uh, AWS. And this is how you can configure. So again, it takes like, you know, just a few minutes to launch. But uh, if you want to look at it, just click on GraphDB. And uh, it gives you all the details, like, you know, role and the engine and also region. And the size that we selected is the T3, T3, T3 medium. And also you can look at the VPC 
and also the multi AG. And here, like you know, once you have this uh, uh, DB available, and you can use all these options: delete, upgrade, or upgrade at next window, add AWS session, or restore to point in time. And you can click on modify if you want to make any changes. Okay, so let's go to monitoring and let's look at the monitoring and uh, here you can see all the, the the cpu utilization engine uptime and variable memory and all the details here and if you want to look at the logs and it gives you all the logs when this db is created it's uh, january 28 and you see that it's the uh, uh, utc time and look at the configuration if you want to check your db configuration and you can just go to this option and the configuration and engine version and the cluster ID name and uh, IMDB authentication. You can uh, check all this and also maintenance. Let's look at maintenance and backup. And remember, we selected only keep the backup for one day. And you can change it if you want. It is available up to 35 days. But uh, And uh, here we see that earliest uh, restorable time and the uh, latest restore time and backup window. And let's look at, but we didn't create any tags, but you can add up to 50 tags. And this is how you can uh, uh, configure that Neptune or AD, uh, AWS. And if you have any questions on uh, Graph Database, uh, if you have any questions about Amazon Neptune or how Graph Databases work on AWS and uh, or how to configure Neptune on um, AWS and how to modify it, how to create a real replica, or how to create a backup. If you have any questions about Amazon Neptune, please post all your questions in the comments and I will try to reply as soon as possible. And if you like this video, please subscribe and share the channel. Thank you.